I still don't see my presentation. I think I should see it. Yeah. Oh, here's it. So, uh, my name is Victor and I am Go Engineer. Uh, so today I want to discuss with you what is Go Escape analysis. Yeah, what it is. So, uh, I think all fans of Prison Break is here. So we can start discussing what is escape analysis, who is Michael Schofield, and who else we know about this series. Uh, but okay, I'm joking. <laughs> we are not going to discuss this topic, um, not even if I like it. So uh, I hope that we discuss a bit another escape analysis, and it will be interesting for you and maybe even useful. At least hope so. So uh, let's take a look at our agenda. First of all, uh, we will take a look at small overview of Go memory layout. So which types of memory we have, etc. After that, it will be easy for us to go to the main topic of today's discussion, what exactly is escape analysis. And after that, we will try to generate some kind of rules that can be used in our development and that can help us somehow. So memory layout uh, in go we have different segments of memory like in java we have heap and we have stack uh, we have the, the only heap for the whole application and we have a stack per each go routine and go routine is some kind of green thread in java i think something very similar to it uh, apart that we also have fixed size segments memory which store our constants and uh, applications code and other stuff, but it's not important for us. That's why I mark it as three dots. Yeah, because we can skip it for now. What's most, the most important thing for us is to know that we have multiple stacks and the only heap. Uh, first of all, let's start from the stack. So, what important, what interesting we have and know about our stack? Uh, I think the most popular and most known thing that Go stacks are tidy. Yeah, so right now, initial size of Go stack is 2 kilobyte, and it allows us to generate like tens of thousands of Go routines per application and even more. Yeah. Another point that's, of course, if you have such a tiny stack, it should be able to grow. Yeah, because sometimes you work with big data inside the coroutine inside the thread. Uh, so our stacks can grow up up to one gigabyte in 64-bit systems. And again, it depends from the system you are using it. Also, again, I think even it's the most important thing regarding the stack inside this presentation, that stacks is automatically cleaned up. So we don't have any resources which should be spent to clean the stack and we will take a look at it a bit later with more details and just nice to know that stack was according to the rule of last in first out and if you're a bit familiar with go it should explain you why defers keyword works in such a way because it really related to the stack okay on another hand we have a heap and heap is used for storing dynamic memory allocations. So all global variables are stored on heap. Moreover, some references to structures, map, complex data structures as well may be stored here. Uh, so all global variables are there. Also, heap can grow, and everyone knows this because it's a pain. Big heap, it's a really big pain. Yeah, but uh, in our case, the maximal size of heap can be even more than a maximum amount of RAM we have, thanks to virtual memory. Yeah, so it really can be very, very, very big. Uh, and the PTC is that heap is not automatically cleaned up. For that operation, we need our garbage collector. And garbage collector always requires some resources to be able to clean the memory. And again, I'm talking about set sites right now, <laughs> yeah? So we have a GC, which is required for us. And also the only option 
how to configure our garbage collector is to set go GC, set GC percent variable. It's the same thing, which tells us when garbage collector should be executed and when it should be stopped. We will see a bit more details about it on a few slides later. So this is main facts about heap and stack, which we should keep in mind during this conversation. Uh, yeah, so garbage collector is go is concurrent, liquor or mark and sweep garbage collector. I'm not going to describe all this stuff because it may take a day or a week to discuss it. Yeah, but what is important for us to know is that it's concurrent. Yeah, and we will see this on, an, on a slide after the next. So when I've described to you that we have this GoGC variable, which is the only option to influence on our uh, garbage collector on our heap size, yeah, because heap size depends on garbage collector work. Uh, so let me describe how does it work. Let's imagine that our application right now use oh, 100 megabytes of memory here, and our Go GC right now is equals to 100 percent. So Go GC sets in persons. That means that when our application will consume in 100% more memory, then garbage collector will be run. So when our application will meet 200 megabytes heap size, then garbage collector will be run. And it's the only option how we can configure it. So I bet in Java you have like tens of options how to configure GC, even different types of GC. Yeah, so you can make it in a way which is most practic or very um, so you can adapt it to your needs yeah but we don't have such an opportunity in go yeah that's why we think we should think about it and should try to find another options how to manage our memory without control of it so uh here I have a small basic visual presentation of Go runtime scheduler. So the main point we should know is that M is OS thread, G stands for Go routine, yeah, which executes our code, and P is some kind of abstraction that match M to G. Yeah. So in our specific case, we have a system where four virtual threads available for us so we can execute in parallel for Gordon. and i just want to show you the reason of this slide is that garbage collector when it works it takes up to 25 percent of your resources to clean the heap and what is said that in case if for example garbage collector is working but your application generates a lot of allocations and garbage collector understands that it can meet the deadline because at the moment of time when it when it clean all memory he has marked much more allocations will be done so something should be changed and in such situation garbage collector can ask for additional resources and take up to 50 or even more percent of your resources to be spent to garbage collector and why i'm talking about this that you should understand that then in case you have four threads you shouldn't be you can't be sure that you in parallel execute four go routines with your business logic it's not true so you always should remember about the garbage collector and our goal will be to minimize the size of heap to minimize the time on which during which garbage collector is working yeah and minimize the resources which should be spent to garbage collector so the last scene from this introduction part which we should know before start talking about the escape analysis is just a reminder that go is value oriented language so every time you pass some arguments from function to another function we copy this by data so pointers structures maps everything will be copied just keep it in mind and here we are escape analysis so what it is uh, i can say that escape analysis it's some kind of process that compiler used to decide where your values should be stored 
on a heap on a stack. To be more clear, escape analysis all only tells us when something will be stored on a heap. So, how does it work? First of all, it builds some kind of a graph that takes um, every allocation statement as its root. Then it goes through all the referencing and addressing operations and mark it and increment or decrement the imaginary counter. Yeah. Uh, after that, each variable with negative count will be a candidate for moving to him. So I'm very careful here. I can tell you that this variable will be moved to him. It's just a candidate because the final decision of what should be allocated on a heap will be made, including all and other arguments. Yeah. On the right side, you should see this list of uh, options how we can dereference and address in variables and what would be in result in our counter. So it, we can read this and can imagine what will happen. So go next. Here you should see this terminal and some comments. So we use go build command and pass something specific to it. It's a GC flux and what is most important for us is that we pass minus m equals to one minus l. This exactly tells that we want to run escape analysis and minus l tells us that we don't want to allow inlining our functions but I think we shouldn't discuss it right now but it's just important to keep it here because it may somehow affect our analysis. So when we run it, we see some kind of output. In our case, we see that we have some application, we have main go file with the root of our application. And inside it exists some variable A, which moved to heap. Okay. Another example, and it contains just the only difference in the command that right now we pass not minus, minus m equals one, but minus m equals two. And this gives us much more details. So we see some kind of reasons why this would be moved to heap. So minus m equals two number allows us to specific which level of digitalization we want to receive in the output. And we even can use, we even can pass three there. Yeah, but in such a case, we receive a lot of information in the output, but you still should remember that this output, previous one and this one, three of them tells us the same. Yeah, that A will be moved to heap. So it's really rare case where you need such a level of digitalization. Second level almost always is enough. Okay, and uh, right now I'll show you a set of examples of real cases where we can understand uh, when and what would be allocated. And we will try to understand why. Yeah, so the first example is value semantics. Uh, we have a very simple code here. We have a main function, we have a new article function, which is a constructor for article struct. Uh, you can find an article struct here just because I wanted to have more space for another information. But it's not important for us what exactly article contains, but again, we can see that it contains name and views fields, yeah, but doesn't care about it. What is most important for us? Uh, in our constructor new article, we create article struct and returns it. Also, we print a pointer to this value. In main func, we call this article, and print a pointer of this func as well, of this value as well. So we have a terminal as well. First command we execute, we just run our application and we see output of our prints. It shows us that we have two different pointers here. And this tells us that we don't share a memory. So we have two different places where our values are stored. Okay. Then we execute our escape analysis tool and it shows us nothing. Again, this means that there is no any escaping to the heap. Also, we have some very basic presentation uh, which show us memory which we have. So in this case, our heap is empty. 
we haven't produced any allocations to the heap. And that's good, yeah, because we don't want to load our garbage collector. Uh, regarding the stack, we have a few squares here. So each square represents a stack frame of the function. So it contains all information which is required for the function call. And the first function is main, then main calls new article, so each square will be above it. And like this. In the end, we have this square which marks invalid memory. So it tells that this memory shouldn't be addressed and it can be reused by other functions. So, for example, new article will make a call to another function, then that frame will be used. Uh, okay, so we see that we have main stack frame, new article main st stack frame, and we see that we have in both of them allocations with different pointers. And when new article returns an A struct to main, this value just will be copied. So just a copy, nothing special. And it's a good approach. So it's better to return structs, but not a pointer in this case, because in such a way, we don't do any additional load to our garbage collector and don't do allocations to the heap. Let's take a look at a bit another case. Here, I call it pointer semantics. We have the same code, except the only difference. Right now, new article returns not an article, but a pointer to article. So what can we find here? We run our application and see that in such a case, we have the same pointers. So it tells us that we share the same memory inside the new article and inside the main. Okay, we run escape analysis. And what do we see? That A escapes to heap. So A variable inside a new article constructor will be allocated on a heap. And why? A bit below on this escape analysis output, we see that we use such a text like address of and return. So it's additional arguments why something may be allocated on a heap. In our case, it's because a variable was addressed. So it's minus one to the counter, you should remember it. And also another point is that we return a pointer. So it's another marker in such situation. Let's take a look at our visual presentation. And we see that in such a case, a variable will be allocated on a heap. And new article would point to that memory on a heap. And a value on a, on a main as well will just point to that memory on a heap. And in such a case, it's additional allocation and additional work to our garbage collector. So in high load application, it's not a good approach. Okay, one more case. Oh, and here we have this article structure. You can take a look at it. So this code is a bit different. We initialize our article a variable inside of a main function. Then we have increment views function, which accept a pointer a increment views fields and print us a pointer of views fields. And also we print that in main function. And what do we have? We run our application and see that again, it has the same pointer. So will it be allocated on a heap like in the previous case? Not really. When we run our escape analysis, we see that A does not escape. But why? We have the same pointer. And here we should understand that in case if we pass a pointer from higher call to lower call, then it will be allocated in the higher stack, in our case, in main stack frame, and it just will be shared with new article. New article stack frame will make any modifications is needed to this object, return it, and after that, that stack frame will be marked as invalid memory. So we will not have a link to invalid memory. So it's a loved case. It's good approach to not generate additional allocations to heap. However, I should mention it that receiving pointers to in our functions and modif modifying such objects, it's not a good practice when we're talking about the code reading quality 
Yeah, because it's hard to understand what is changed. It's always better to return another copy of changed object. Okay, one more case, interfaces. So in Go interfaces, it allows us to achieve polymorphism to give us some kind of abstractions. Yeah, and it's a good approach to use them because it also helps us to meet a good testability level. Yeah, and yeah, we really try to use them a lot where it's possible, but it's not cheap. So let's take a look at this code. Uh, again, we have this constructor, we create and initialize this A article, which will be returned to made. So we have the same code, let's say. We run it, again, we have the different pointer, different pointers here because variable A inside new article was allocated on its stack frame, and it, then it was copied to stack frame of main. That's fine. Escape analysis tells us that nothing special, nothing was moved to heap and that's cool and we have another code it seems to be similar but it has the only difference as well instead of print length function right now we use fmt.printf and the difference between them that print length is built-in function which receives types and printf from fmt package accepts interfaces. And should we see any changes here? I guess yes. So when we run it, we see that we have two different pointers, but in such a case, first allocation was made in a stack and second one in a heap. And escape analysis tells us that we taking an address of A on line seven, on line eight, sorry, and another reason of this is interface converted. So what is going on here? In such situation, when we pass pointer to FMT print F, however, it looks like the previous case where I have said to you that when we pass pointer to the function below, there is, shouldn't be any allocations to heap. But in such a specific case, when we're talking about the interfaces, our compiler doesn't know when and how does this variable will be used? Because we have a custom operators to interfaces and compiler just don't understand if it's safe to allocate this memory inside this frame stack. If, it's, if it is not sure about it, then this just should be moved to the heap. So it's simple rule. Uh, another case with maps. So what do we have here? We have a uh, map which contains string article so key is string value is article and simple values yeah we run a code and see that's memory for map and memory for key and value will be used from the stack as well cool another example again the only change we right now use as a value not an article but pointer to article and in such a case, when we run our Golan uh, escape analyzer, we see that map itself will be allocated on a stack, but article like this value specific, yeah, it will be allocated on a heap because again, compiler is not sure is it safe to allocate it on a stack because map has a complex structure and in case of uh, memory of map grow values can be rearranged copied to another bucket and that stuff so it's just not safe but what's the goal here what's the idea here that you see it looks like the same code so we if we don't know about this mechanic mechanism yeah so we can think that it should be the same but again in a point of view from performance from garbage collection load it's really make a difference so we should see it, we should know how does it work. Yeah, uh, I think that's my, my favorite example. So we have a type A, we declare an array which contains 2,730 objects of A, we print size of a single A object, and we print the whole size of an array. So what do we see? We see that 
synthesis structure requires 24 bytes and the whole array is 65,520. Okay, escape analysis tells us that everything fine, all allocations will be made inside the stack. Cool. We have the following code. The only difference is that right now we have one more element inside our array. Just one more element. And in such a case, our array is too big to be allocated inside, this, inside the stack. So compiler decides to move it to heap. Different just in a few bytes. So what's the rule? We have two options how to declare our variables. And if we use explicit declarations, then our max variable size may be up to one gigabyte, which equals to the maximum size of stack in 64-bit systems. Yeah, so it depends. If you use implicit variables declaration, then the max size is approximately 65 kilobytes, thousand kilobytes. So in our previous example, we just uh, moved over the limit. Yeah, that's why it was moved to the heap. And also very interesting case, we have a code. We have main function, which calls foo. What does the foo do? It just initialize a slice which LAN 0 and capacity 10. That's it. So there is no any kind of escape into heap. Everything is fine. We have another code. In such a case, our full function accepts the capacity size. And it comes from the main. And in this case, the whole slice will be allocated on the heap and it's a question why why does this happen and the answer is pretty easy because in such a situation compiler sees that capacity of slice is unknown until the runtime so it's not safe to make a decision where it, if it should be stored on a stack what happens if it will be initialized with not 10 but with 1000 then it will be too big to be allocated on the stack and application will crash. That's why, that's why it's much safer to allocate it inside the stack. So we have reviewed all the examples I was prepared and let's make some summary. Let's prepare some rules which we can use. So first of all, when we're sharing pointers up to the stack, so when we return pointers to our objects, then allocations to heap may take a place. Another case, when you're passing values to function which accepts interface, as I shown you with this example of fmt.printf. So please be careful with this. Yeah. So uh, another point is that um, value of pointer value of map and slice always makes allocation on the heap. If your values is too big, bigger than the limitation, then again, it's a candidate to be allocated on the heap. If your value is unknown on a compiler time, again, it's a candidate to heap. And a lot of other cases, because Go involves, and with each version, we can meet any additional changes on new mechanisms here. So I think that's it, uh, and I'm ready to answer to your questions. Thank you very much for a great speech, great talk. Congratulations on that. Thank you.